Hello again, it's Amanda Taylor. Welcome to Oaxaca Gloss Studios uh, video series. This one is on uh, gloss powders, um, all about powders. And, but uh, the first video that we're, I'm going to be doing is going to focus on um, working with frit or the powder, glass powder, the different binders that are out there, and uh, the mediums, the liquid mediums that are incorporated into the binders and the frit in order to make a modeling clay or modeling glass or glass clay. So it's been called many different things over the years. Um, and I did a bunch of researching um, on various people that had played with this. Uh, I've seen this done and worked with um, different glass artists that have uh, created their own glass clay and so this is just kind of a little extension but my goal is to actually create little very fine um, vessels and uh, I did do one the other day but this is just powder there is no binder at all in this and um, yeah it's very 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 thin so I'm going to uh, like focus in on you can see how thin it is and I did, uh, when I was co-working, I, I was sanding it a little bit. I cracked the, the pink layer. The inside is blue. Um, they're both tints. But this is just a little experiment. But anyway, so this has no binder at all, period. It's just, it's a, more of a pressing glass technique. But um, my goal with the modeling clay is to actually get to uh, that thin of a vessel uh, without um, any molds really. I'm just going to be draping it over a stainless steel form in the end but I'm going to try to get some of the folds that I got when I was draping it over the stainless steel mold. I'm going to do that while I'm working with it um, but we'll see how it goes. But uh, First of all I just wanted to talk about all the different options that are out there for um, trying to create some glass clay and I'm going to be working with several different recipes um, that I found on the internet um, and uh, that I've played with myself but uh, the first one that is a it's a product that has been out there for probably about three years I think not quite sure when she actually started this but uh, it's um, Lois Mano, and it's a glass bird, uh, glass fusing art products, and it's a modeling glass. This is the powder binder that she created, and this is the modeling glass liquid medium that she created. And they're both uh, agroscopic, which means, this is agroscopic, which means it attracts water to it. So it helps with uh, keeping the, clay from cracking and moisturized and all that kind of thing but uh, anyway and what I'm going to be playing with is a bunch of different products that I've had in my studio for many years and I've been wanting to play with this for quite a while but um, I also have a powdered binder which is CMC and this isn't the jar this is the salsa jar but um, I had a large bag of this so I just put it into smaller bags or smaller jars, but um, it is a lot more granular than what this binder is. And there, this is food grade, um, so I tasted it, and I tasted the modeling glass binder. <laughs> and they're both supposed to be food grade, so it's not going to kill me. But I spit it out after I, you know, tasted it. I spit, tried to get it out, and it did leave a funny, kind of weird feeling in my mouth, but. Anyway, it's food grade, can't hurt you. I've already researched all this, so. But uh, anyway, so the CMC binder that I have, in order to make it finer, I'm actually going to be using my coffee grinder to get it finer. So that is one of the first things I'm gonna be doing. And also, like the taste of Lois's, <laughs> I know it's weird that I tasted it, but it's always good. It's supposed to be food grade, so. Anyway, so anyway, it had a, a odd, well, just a really fluffy taste to it. So um, 
and I have also uh, gum arabic, which I've had for years because we use it in pat de verre techniques. But uh, and I have a powdered version, and I also have you know Winston Newton, uh, the liquid version. So um, I tasted this as well because uh, I did research on this. The gum arabic is a food safe product, so and it's added in a lot of our different forms of food that we eat so I tasted it and it also left a weird taste in my mouth and it also has that fluffy taste to it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the CMC um, I'm going to try each one of these recipes that I have I'm going to be using it as pure CMC and then none of the recipes have actually mixed these two together so I'm just going to do that um, and see what happens in the end, but uh, that's further on down the road. But anyway, so that's the CMC binder, the gum arabic binder, um, and like I said, we'll be using the powdered and the liquid form, and uh, hy hy hygroscopic uh, liquids, so um, be using water. Um, honey is also a hygroscopic liquid. So I mixed a little bit of honey with water and um, I might add a little bit more just to make it a little thicker, but I also have tons of other binders or mediums, I should say. Um, you know, I have this unique glass product. It's another liquid medium and I'm sure if I add that to the honey, it might make a difference. Also, there's water-friendly medium made by Fuse Master that I've had for years. I also have I might mix the honey with, uh, I have some CMC and H2O or water mixed, um, pre-mixed, I've had it for years as well, but um, and there's a thicker version here and a thinner version. So like I said, there's lots of playing to do. Um, some of the recipes also call for an adding uh, glycerin to it. So this is just, you know, your drugstore, grocery store. So uh, I'm going to try to be adding that to it. And what the glycerin does, it's a plasticizer. So that makes the, the glass clay more workable over a longer period of time. It's, it changes the texture of it a little bit so it doesn't crack on you when you're trying to work with it. But I'm going to be using some of that. Um, also, some of the recipes call for a flux. So I have a Faro Sunshine. I have a, a mixing flux here that we're going to be trying um, in one of the recipes. <laughs> There's lots to do here. <laughs> lots of little uh, experiments. So, but we, we'll be starting with the tried and true that's already on the market. But um, yeah, and I, like I said, I have made glass clay before using just the CMC and glycerin. And, but I want to try to experiment a little bit more with some of the recipes I found on the internet to find out which feels the best and which is more workable and all that kind of stuff. Also, another um, another flux that I have had for many years is uh, this, which is not a bullseye product. It is a hotline. It's also two. It's a glass bridge, and I've probably had it for like ten years. So, but um, it's another flux. So I'm going to be adding that to the recipe that actually calls for a flux, and um, yeah. Okay, so and the flux is usually something that actually is added to glass when they're making the glass uh, in order to make it so that it flows at a lower temperature. It, yeah, so it flows at a lower temperature compared to if you don't add it. Um, and it also is added to ceramic glazes for the same purpose and, um, and also to enamels like when you're working with enamels and just painting on them onto the surface. So that being said about all the binders and the liquid mediums and uh, <laughs> the fluxes and the plasticizers, um, and I think that's about all of the weird stuff that we have here. I am actually one of the, one of the recipes calls for pro propylene uh, glycol and dipropylene glycol which are, they're both um, extend the dry time, drying time of things, and they like help 
retain moisture. It's a moisture retaining agent, both of them. So, and I, I have um, bought two food grade um, bottles of both of those. So I'll be using that as well. But, um, <clears throat> and uh, yes, let's see here. And also with, um, you know, I'm, I have a bunch of different, so the glass powder that I'm actually going to be adding to each of these is, uh, I'm going to be sticking with one color, <laughs> so <laughs> try not to confuse the matter too much, but um, so I have the 00024, which is tomato red opal that Bullseye Glass puts out. I have, um, this is a, a Rouge enamel, so we're actually going to be mixing some enamels in with the powdered binder and I also have another this is a glass paint um, I'm just trying different things so this is a Josephine glass paint and it's blood red so like I said I have all these different materials that I they're sitting in my closet so I might as well use some of them to test this is also another enamel a fuse master uh, a red one two four um, I have Unique Glass Colors, which is the same company that makes this glass medium. And this is a tomato red. Um, so I'm going to be trying some of that. So it's, I'm sure it's it's like a paint, uh, a glaze, uh, or an enamel of some kind. I'm also going to try out some uh, ceramic stains. I have these... Um, yeah, the ceramic stains that I got from um, Seattle when I was Seattle Pottery when I was there, and I have used them mixed with Flex, which was actually clear glass powder. Um, and we did some test samples. That was when uh, Emma Varga was here uh, teaching. So, but again, it's interesting to find out what happens with this kind of material. Um, I have. Um, Rogue Enamels, which I just got uh, this shipment in, and it's a company out of uh, Ontario and Canada, and they're the only um, distributor of the, these enamels. So we're going to try these enamels as well, the Rogue Enamels, and that's Aurora Red. And then I have, um, oh, these are Faro Sunshine Enamels, which are, I think, warm glass in, um, in North Carolina here, it carries all the Ferro Sunshine enamel products, but um, I've had these for years. We used them in many, a bunch of different classes, but this is Cardinal Red, so another enamel. These are both beautiful colors, and you can see, yeah, pretty close in color, and, um, but these are harder to get, but they're available, well, they're both hard to get. This is a, the Rogue Enamel's a UK product, and the Ferro Sunshine is, well, it's made all over the world, but um, they're here in the States, but they usually only sell large quantities, like one kilogram at a time, which that's a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a lot if you, and it's expensive. So, you know, it's a, uh, <laughs> you can spend a lot of money on enamels, but um, yeah, and that's it for all the powders, but really the only glass powder that we're using is the bullseye. And actually I might try, uh, I do have some uh, float glass powders that I've worked with in the past, so we'll add that to the mix as well. And so it should be very interesting exploration. So once I get my, um, what is that? Oh, once I get my, uh, what are they? Uh, uh, pro propylene glycol and dipropylene glycol, which should be coming in uh, tomorrow, then we'll continue on. But I just thought I would give you a, an overview of what is going to be coming up in the next part of this video lesson. Thank you.